This is a great slide. This is in uh, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride's book, uh, which I highly recommend, uh, Gut and Psychology. And here's her cartoon expression of a uh, great cell with a little hair and the little enzymes, and then a sick cell uh, that she would explain in autism. I thought it was a great visual. For those of you who didn't get a chance to meet Elaine Gottschall, she was an author, a scientist, and she became a crusader on behalf of people suffering with bowel problems after she cured her daughter's colitis with diet. Unfortunately, she passed away two years ago, but fortunately, she left behind all of her research. This tree lady is one of her slides. This cartoon picture beautifully illustrates that what happens in the gastrointestinal system can directly impact upon the brain. So the role of the gastrointestinal system is to prepare food for absorption into the bloodstream. Food contains energy, caloric energy, that enters the cell and it's changed to something called ATP. Elaine used to call it all that power, but it's adenosine triphosphate. It's, it's, it's the power that runs the organs. So it's important to remember that without the absorption of food, organs starve and metabolic pathways malfunction. Caloric energy, vitamins, and minerals are all lost as parts of the body are deprived of the proper nourishment. In order for absorption to take place, food must be broken down into its tiniest components. Fats will be broken down to fatty acids, proteins eventually to amino acids. The specific carbohydrate diet focuses on carbohydrates because when there's damage to the mucosal layer and there's injury to the villi, enzymes on the surface of the small intestine are destroyed. The injury to the intestinal surface, specifically to the digestive enzymes residing on the intestinal cells, prevents the complete digestion of most carbohydrates. And therefore, undigested food provides nutrient for intestinal microbes, resulting in an overgrowth, and waste products from the overgrowth produce acids and gas, which cause pain, heartburn, nausea, but even more problematic. The acid produced can further degrade the lining of the intestine and the intestinal cells. Uh, below you'll see the research. Um, Dr. Horvath found 58% of the children with ASD had a disaccharide enzyme deficiency, 69.4 had reflux esophagitis, and 67.7 had duodenal inflammation. Dr. Bowie, Ku Winter, and Kushak echoed Dr. Horvath's finding, finding greater than 50% of children with ASD showed significant GI symptoms of maldigestion and malabsorption.